Skincare Channel. So today I want to talk to you about marriage after babies and how your marriage and your wife and husband dynamic change when you have a child. And it's not really something that people really talk about. They just kind of say, oh, you'll figure it out after having a baby. And it's incredible how much your life changes. I know people always say your life is going to change after having a baby. You take it for a grain of salt. You may think that you are prepared, that your marriage is prepared, but I don't think any can, one can really prepare themselves for such a sudden change. So yes, you have nine to 10 months to prepare, but one day you're just husband and wife and the next day or three hours from after you wake up, you are now mom and dad, plus your husband and wife. So you now have two titles and having this baby that demands so much attention, especially from the mom for the first couple months, it demands all of your attention between feeding them and changing their diaper and trying to keep them inter interactive and keep up with their socializing and their developmental state and all the different milestones, plus you're not sleeping. <laughs> so your mommy role takes 100% of your time, but you need to remember that you are still a wife. And husbands need to remember that your wife is now a mom and they're trying to figure things out just like you are. And moms, you need to remember that you are a wife and your husband does need attention. A couple things that our mentors taught us during those first hard, I mean hard first couple months, um, was that you need to take time for yourselves. One thing that we did implement in being able to do, in being able to continue our husband and wife relation is that when we are together, when the baby is asleep or with the grandparents or with a sitter, we don't talk about the baby. If we need to talk about the baby, we do it for the first 30 minutes. We try to cut that down to like 15 to 20 minutes, but realistically, we love our child, so we love to talk about him. So we'll talk about him for the first 30 minutes of our free time together. But then after that, we don't talk about the baby. We do not talk about changing diapers. We don't talk about their health. We don't talk about anything. We talk about us. We talk about what we did that day, how we're feeling, what's going on in our job situation. Then we talk about hobbies. We talk about dreams. We talk about things that we want to do together or things that we want to do separately. Like I am a quilter. I love quilting. I love crafting. I love, I'm getting into cross stitch. So I'll talk to him a little bit about that. Not that he really cares, <laughs> but he will listen. And um, I'll share with him all the different <laughs> struggles I'm having with being a mom, a wife, and a quilter. <laughs> um, and he listens. And he right now is really into, well, he's always been into sports and football and baseball and uh, basketball and now he's into these pop figurines so he'll talk about that and we just we get into each other's heads on our different um, hobbies and what we like and we understand what each other like so I believe with communication being the single most key of marriages that is very important you need to know what your significant others hobbies are um, what they like what they dislike and that is something that changes after you have a baby <laughs> um, but still kind of stays the same but you still want to interact with that and have a ongoing dialogue of your day-to-day -day things one of the other things that our mentor told us is to keep religion in the family keep god in your family 
we don't get to church very often because our schedules just really don't allow it. I work on Sundays. Saturdays is the only day that we have with our family, um, the three of us. So we like to go and do things. And we do want to try and make it more of a point to go to church Saturday nights because our church does offer that service. But for right now, we still, we pray whenever something good happens in our life, we praise God and thank him for all the good that has happened in our life. We also, if we are struggling, then we pray to him. We don't harbor it. We pray and we ask him, okay, what direction do you want us to go in? This is a very difficult situation. There are a lot of trials that we are having, but I know with you, everything is possible. So with that being a singularity in our mindset, it has really helped us because we have gone through some financial things and with having a baby again, <laughs> um, that we're just like, oh, what do we do? And just by praying, it helps us to go, okay, God has this. He, we may not know what is going on, what he has in mind, but we have faith that he will let us know and show us in the very near future. And it helps us and our child. So we're not tense, we're not stressed, we're not, freaking out all the time and he feels that children feel when you are stressed when you're unhappy um and we just want to have a happy loving home life for our child so that helps us so much so god communication i cannot stress to you communication um those first couple months were very very difficult especially on my husband because he was used to having me all the time to basically not really entertain him but I was there and it was just us and now there's a baby and I'm tired and I'm sore and it was difficult um, but communication and I would highly recommend having mentors. Find a family. So my mentors are amazing friends of the family. I call them my aunt and uncle because I grew up with them since I was one, I think. No, five. I think I was five. Um, I met them when I was five and their sons are my brothers. And I just they've been together for so long they took on us to mentor during our engagement and i think if you can find a couple that have been together for a long time that have been through all the same trials that you are going through will go through or have gone through they can help you not only with their knowledge of how their marriage worked but also with their knowledge of what not to do <laughs> and this is the consequences of what will happen if you do that <laughs> and our mentors they have been amazing we can go a couple months without talking to them and then we could just call them up and say okay this this and this is happening what can we do um and same with my husband he is very comfortable calling up my uncle and uh just talking to him man on man and saying okay she's doing this and i need help because i don't know what to do <laughs> and he explains it and i can't say that our relationship and our marriage would be as strong without them today so quick recap the three most important things that I feel a marriage needs in order to successfully succeed. Okay, maybe four things. <laughs> uh, but the fourth thing we're not going to talk about on this channel. But in order for a relationship to successfully succeed with having children is one, God, two, communication, three, a mentorship. 
It does not have to be family. It can be friends. It can be someone that you find at church, someone that you find at work, wherever. Um, and then for a intimate relationship, you need to continue intimacy. And that doesn't mean just physical. It also means mental. You need to keep talking to each other. I hope that this helps and it finds you well. And if you have any questions or have a story, let me know what trials you went through in your marriage during and after your pregnancy and having your first child or even your second and your third or your fourth. Uh, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your stories. I love hearing marriage stories. Until next time, bye. Thank you.